Hello everyone. This video is aimed at exploring what is a digital twin. It is a digital replica of a physical asset. Now, some people find this uh, terminology a bit confusing because in their mind, if it is just a digital replica, why can't it just be a CAD file? And it is right and wrong to a certain extent, but depending upon who you listen to, uh, uh, there, there is a slight confusion. But from your standpoint, what you need to understand is a, dig a digital twin, uh, when we talk about it in its holistic sense, we are talking about a digital twin having a mechanistic model, a sensing and control model, a big data analytics model, a machine learning uh, model. All of these aspects need to go together for it to be called a digital twin. Just a, visual, a virtual replica or a digital replica cannot be ascribed as a digital twin. So with regards to that, let me give you a very uh, useful example that uh, one company, Ansys, Ansys is a, is a, a large uh, corporation that develops uh, uh, the Ansys software that is mostly used for engineering simulations. So what they did was they uh, combined with a company. Uh, they, the company wanted them to create a digital twin uh, for their configurable safety relays. Now, I will walk you through uh, this process so that you can understand how they went about doing it and what is the benefit that they got out of it. So for a digital twin to be uh, successful, for it to work to the company's benefit, uh, people need to understand what is it that we want out of this uh, digital twin at the end of the day. So with regards to that, uh, the con configurable safety relays that the company uses, they are there to prevent injuries. Uh, if there is uh, any uh, issue in the company or any damage on the factory floor uh, with the automation, and it simply cuts off the electric power so that the damage cannot be extended. So the problem is when this safety relay failed, the entire production line needs to be stopped. Why? Because of health and safety. You, you can't really put uh, people's health and safety uh, under risk. So this is the main problem. We need to avoid that stopping, that uh, loss of production because of the safety relay fail. And we can't really predict when it will fail. So this is why we need Industry 4.0 technologies to make sense of wh why it fails, when it could fail, and how we can avoid uh, long downtimes. So by integrating real-time sensor data with simulations to predict failures in advance, you can do that quite easily. And this is primarily uh, what simulations are useful for. So now you can replace the relay without any problems because you know, uh, according to your simulated data, when it will fail. So then the next time you are running a maintenance operation or uh, there is another activity going on, you can simply go on, replace the relay, and it will not cause any problems when it comes time for your production. So what the uh, what ANSYS, the company does, is they ran simulation. They ran a Maxwell a simulation to show the magnetic field at different uh, armature positions. So that allowed them to gauge when or after how many uh, cycles will uh, the relay tend to fail. And based on that data, they created a digital twin so that in real time, they can look at all the different aspects that are coming into the system. And at the end of the day, they know exactly when something can go wrong. And as I said, in their next maintenance run or in their next activity where the production line is not in use, if it is closer to the date that it is supposed to uh, go out of commission, you can simply replace it and you will not have to worry too much about that. But in Doing that, look at this image that is on your screen. In doing that, this is the amount of work that goes into actually developing a digital twin that is useful for you. Because again, if uh, the, the phrase that I used earlier with simulations, garbage in, garbage out, you can very easily create a digital twin of pretty much anything. But if you do not have the control aspect of that embedded within your system, that system will not be able to tell you how the system is going to work. That is why for the digital relay, we need to have all the different aspects that make uh, the functionality of the, uh, of the uh, configurable relay uh, in real time. So this is, this is a very, very huge undertaking and it, it is not a simple task, but again, the benefits are astronomical. 
uh, these digital twins, they are being used quite widely these days. I mean, uh, prime examples are in uh, wind turbines. They are used quite a lot to make those uh, uh, wind, uh, digital twins. Uh, for motors, uh, again, a very, very useful application for pumps. Uh, most of these digital twins, they tend to be component based. Why? Because, I mean, as you can see on the screen, it is quite a complex and complicated uh, thing to do. So component based uh, digital twins tend to be uh, simpler to uh, develop. Obviously, a system based digital twin that will incorporate, let's say, 10 different machines with all the different control elements within it uh, would be a very, uh, very huge task. But it is not to say that one should not go for a component based digital twin because if uh, the component that you are currently developing a digital twin for is the most critical part within your uh, system, then it is a wise thing to do so. If it is the, the most critical part that can uh, stop your production or that can uh, hinder uh, the production flow, then it is something that you should really be looking towards creating a digital twin so that uh, the chances of it happening in the future again and again over and over can be reduced as much as possible. So that is an example of a digital twin. Now, as I said to you earlier, I will also be showing you some details that are available with regards to uh, what Industry 4.0 has developed. So MTC, the Manufacturing Technology Center from the UK, they have actually uh, developed a factory in a box as they like to call it. And as you can see at the bottom of the screen, this factory in a box is basically in a room where they have used a number of digital technologies that can uh, show us how different uh, aspects can work together. You can configure it uh, to different uh, production flows. You can configure it to uh, based on your requirements. And what you see on the top screen is a, a virtual environment where everything that is happening in the real world can be seen in the virtual world. So it, it allows you to get a good understanding of how these things will work. So this is a very, a very a useful thing that has been developed and it, it allows companies to uh, test their models. It allows companies to uh, just have a uh, understanding of how they can incorporate different digital technologies. Because seeing something in the real world is much more impactful than simply somebody explaining you that, oh, if you add this and this, uh, you will get X. So th this is, I mean, a, a very, uh, very useful thing that has been developed and it is uh, making uh, quite an impact uh, in the real world. So another thing that has been established by uh, the Germany, uh, by Germany, I mean, Germany is one of the leaders when it comes to Industry 4.0. In fact, they are the ones who has the most uh, discussions or most documents uh, generated for Industry 4.0 and it is known as the DFKI Smart Lego Factory. So in addition to having all the different aspects of uh, Industry 4.0, it also uh, shows you a production line. It shows you the production line. It is, I mean, made out of Lego bricks. So that also piques some people's interest. Uh, and th this uh, production line is used to build tractors and the assembly line is fully monitored. And one good aspect of uh, this smart factory is the fact that it allows you to actually monitor and derive uh, key performance indicators uh, right there on the software. So in, in addition to working with all the uh, physical aspects and the digital technologies, now you can combine them all together and you can uh, analyze, visualize, and identify different aspects, different uh, key performance indicators that uh, you can utilize for uh, best uh, practices. Even in your own uh, production flow, you can uh, manage that within the system and it will give you uh, the same kind of output depending upon your requirements. 